Hello! Time to explain the second lab of the year for chemistry. In this lab, we're going to try to calculate the size of one single atom, which sounds like it's a really hard thing to do. Well, we're not going to use a ruler to do this. We're going to use an experimental technique to figure this out. So let me explain what we're going to do. Well, the first part of the experiment is going to be done by your teacher. He or she is going to find out what the volume of one single drop of this oleic acid mixture is. So in other words, what's the volume of that? So he or she will do that in front of the classroom and tell you what the answer is. So remember that you need to know one drop's volume. Keep that in mind. So now you're going to go over to your station and you're going to have a tray, a blackened tray that has water in it. I know it's hard to see, but there's water in there and hopefully it's nice and still. We're going to put, or you're going to put, a layer of lycopodium powder all over the water. So you're just going to sprinkle it on as best you can. So let me try to get that pretty quickly. Yeah, it's pretty good. So you want a nice, pretty thick layer because you want to see where the lycopodium powder is. You want to be able to, in other words, see the surface of the water. So try to get it pretty good and thick. And if you're not sure if it's enough, just ask your teacher. And I'm sure you'll be told that you have enough. So something like that should be good because um, now we can see the surface of the water. This is just lying on top of the water. So now we're going to want to put one drop of oleic acid onto that lycopodium powder, and you'll see what happens. Before you go, you might want to just a little bit of practice by seeing how much of a pinch you need to give it to give one drop. And once you feel pretty confident, go over to your tray and give one drop. Get as close as you can to the surface without it actually touching the surface. So very carefully reach over and just one drop like that. And voila, you get like a little circle. Well, before it changes much, I'll explain what's going on later, you want to measure four or five diameters and take their average because it's not a perfect circle. We're going to pretend like it's a perfect circle and then use your meter stick or your ruler and try to measure, like let's say, four different diameters. And then you'll just average those four or five diameters and then use the average diameter to do your calculations. Okay, so keep that in mind. We're going to pretend like we have a circle here and we're going to know the diameter and from the diameter, you could calculate the area of that little sumo, uh, pseudo circle there. So here's what we're doing is we're assuming, let me just show you the molecules themselves first. Let's say these are the oleic acid molecules. Every oleic acid molecule is kind of a long thing. And one side, let's say it's the red side, um, loves water. It wants to touch water. The other side of each molecule hates water, wants to get away from the, the water. So when you pour the oleic acid on there, all these molecules, which are just jumbled up, are all trying to find the water. So their water-loving side is going to be looking for the water. And they'll go face down where their tails are sticking up in the air and their water-loving heads reaching down to the water. And they're not going to be on top of each other because this molecule on top will try to find the water as well. So what you're going to be doing, or what does happen, is that all the oleic acid molecules will be trying to find the water and they'll be side by side on the water like this. As you can imagine all the oleic acid molecules just standing up in that little layer there. So what you're going to have is something like this, where let's say your oleic acid spreads out into that circle there. Well, it's actually making a column. And the height of that column is one molecule high. So we're assuming that height is exactly one molecule because we're assuming every molecule can get down and touch the water like this. So what we'll use is our formula for the volume of a cylinder, where the volume is equal to the area of the base times its height. Well, we're trying to find the height because that's what we're trying to calculate, the height of one molecule. So we need the area, which you're going to get by measuring the diameter. And then we need the volume, the volume of this cylinder. Now you might think, okay, use the volume that your teacher found out um, for the volume of one drop. No, the, that drop is 499 five hundredths alcohol. Only one five hundredth of that drop contains oleic acid. Because if we use pure oleic acid and one drop of pure oleic acid, we would need something like a swimming pool to see how big of a layer it would spread out into. So we've intentionally diluted the oleic acid so it's only one five hundredth of oleic acid. So the volume that you want to use here is not the volume of just that one drop, it's the volume of oleic acid in one drop. 
So you'll have to take into account that only one five hundredth of that drop volume is what you want to use for that volume. So if you have the volume of oleic acid in one drop, you'll get the area by using pi r squared, and you can solve for height. And there you go, you have the height of one molecule. And if you want to assume it's 10 atoms high, divide by 10, and you have the height of one atom. That's how we're going to do this lab. And at the end, the only thing that I can recommend for the next class is to move your tray slowly, because it's easy to spill, over to the nearest sink, dump out the mixture down the sink, and we want all traces of oleic acid and lycopodium powder off the tray. So just rinse it the best you can for a minute. And then once you have it nice and clean, you can put it back where you found it for the next class. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you tomorrow.